Hello and welcome to the 35th video in this series of videos programming a chess engine in C. So this video we've got the last stage of our move generation before we actually start calling the functions to add the moves to the move list and this is castling and I've just got a board up here with a position where just to remind you if you don't know what castling is in chess how it exactly works. And it basically works as so if the king and the rook are on their starting squares and neither has moved at, at this point in the game and the squares between them are empty and the squares that the king crosses when it castles so there's two squares next to it aren't attacked by the opposing side and the king isn't in check then it can perform what's called a castling move so if I just click edit here so that it won't fire up an engine when we move so for example here to castle kingside the king will go here onto, hang on, I'll just set up the position to have white to move. So to castle king side, the king would go e1 to g1 like this and the rook here. To castle queen side, the king would go e1 to c1 and the rook here like so. And when we generate the moves, we don't actually have to think much about the rook. We simply need to ask, is castling permission, say, for king side available? And we know this from our position using a bitwise and and if it is then we know that the rook must be on its starting square and has not moved yet then all we need to do is say okay are both of the squares say for the king side f1 and g1 empty if they are then we'll check if the king is in check or if f1 is attacked we won't bother checking if g1 is attacked where the king ends up because at the end of our make move function we'll call a function anyway to see if the king has moved into check or the king has been put in check by the move we've made, in which case the move is illegal. So we'll just need to check for e1 and f1. And we do a similar for the queen side, and the same thing for black. So it's not very complicated at all, thank goodness, after the past few videos. So if I go into move gen, it's side dependent. So inside the if side equals white, down here, underneath where the pawns have been looped, so this for loop here, I'm just going to put the code in here and I've prepared it already because it's not very difficult and I'm going to copy and paste it in stage by stage so we can talk. So I'm saying if the castle permission in the position a bitwise and with our white king side castle bit is non-zero which it means that we've got permission to castle king side. So now what we can do is we can say if f1 is empty and g1 is empty and the reason we do this before looking at this, if the squares are attacked or not is because this is much less processor intensive than calling this function here. So if both squares are empty and we've got permission to castle, then now we need to just see is e1 attacked by black, so e1 is where the king's sitting, or f1 attacked by black. If they're both not attacked by black, then we can generate a white king side castling move. And a similar thing is done for the white queen side castling. We end with the white queenside castle bit. Now we have to check if d1, c1 and b1 are empty because we've got to see if these three squares here are all empty. And then we check if e1 and d1 are attacked by black or not. And if they're not, then we can generate our queenside castling move. And exactly the same thing applies for black, but simply with the squares on the 8th rank. And I'll paste both of those in together because it's exactly the same code apart from we're now looking if white is attacking e8 and f8 and e8 and d8 and we're looking at f8 and g8 to see whether they're empty and d8, c8 and b8 to see whether they are empty. And that's all there is to that. So if we go back into vice you can see that I've already set up the position that we were looking at in arena here in an fen and I'm quickly going to show the move generation for this and run it and you can see that it's generated black king side castling and black queen side castling and if I change the side to white to move and oops make and run again now we can see it's generated white quick king side and white queen side castling in the next position here I've got and I'll just get this from the clipboard something slightly trickier although not much trickier so essentially here is a rook is attacking d1 so white can't castle queenside and a pawn is attacking on f1 so white can't castle on kingside either 
So if I put castle 2 in, and call make, and generate the moves, and we see that there's no generation here for in the list for white uh, castling moves. And if I just change the side of this function here so that black is to move, here black is able to castle on the king side. So let's just check that that's also working. So we'll put in castle 2, black to move we've done. So we'll just go over to the console and type make and run vice again. And now you can see we've generated only the black king side castling move. Now obviously there are a huge amount of variations you could do here for checking, which is to put other pieces attacking these squares and things like that. Now I've done a few uh, before actually recording this video, but for the sake of brevity, um, I'm going to assume that what I've added in here for the castling code is actually working correctly and not go through hundreds of positions. So that's it for this video. That's the last step in our move generation function. And the, the next video we'll simply need to replace these statements where we've printed that we're generating a capture or a normal move or something. We'll now start replacing those with the function call to adding our quiet move or our capture move in this way. And the move generation is completed. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.